Hello everyone, I am Tahim, Senior Software Engineer at AppScore. In this video, I am going to show how to provision a MongoDB reference set with TLS, horizontal scaling, vertical scaling, reconfigure the database, reconfigure TLS setting, volume expansion, upgrade your database to a new version, auto scaling the database, and finally backup and restore the database. Before we start, let me show you my environment first. I am using current version 0.8.1. Also, keep CTL version. Uh, sorry, Kubernetes version 1.18.8. Also, I have uh, this Helm charts installed. The start manager chart is for the certificate management. The QDB auto scalers chart is for the QDB auto scaling of the database. QDB catalog chart is for the database version management. QDB Community charts is for the QDB community features. QDB enterprise chart is for the QDB enterprise features. Metric server is for the uh, metrics of the node and pod. And the stash uh, is for the stash chart is for the da database uh, backup and restore. Now let's uh, provision our MongoDB. This is the YML of the MongoDB. Here we are providing the version as 4.0.11. And also the replica set name as replica set. And we are going to provision three members replica set. So we are providing replica set three. As we are turning on three LS on this database, so we are providing SSL mode as required SSL. In the TLS section, we are uh, providing the issuer reference, uh, which is a SAT manager issuer. This is the issuer um, YML. Here we are providing the CA secret name. Mongo CA, this uh, secret contains the CSR 10 CA key. Also, here we are providing a certificate uh, to configure the client certificate. Here we are providing a demo email address so we can see that our certificate uh, after creation contains this email address. We are providing a config secret here. Uh, this config secret contains uh, this. Uh, uh, database configuration uh, in the MongoDB confine. So this is uh, max income. We are setting the max incoming connection as 100k. <coughs> also, we are setting the pod resources as one core CPU and one GB memory. Also, we are going are going to have a storage of one GB in all of the node. Okay, let's apply the YML. So as you can see, the database is now in provisioning state. So our MongoDB community operator will bring up all the nodes and the QDB uh, enterprise operator will, will set up that certificate and TLS of this database. Here you can see we have two services. Uh, this service uh, always points to the primary of the replica set and this service always points to uh, all of the uh, nodes of the database let's wait for the database to become ready the certificate already created so we can check the certificate as you can see there are Three certificates created. Client certificate, which will use to connect to the uh, connect to the database. The server certificate, which is used for the communication between the nodes. Now let's uh, check the certificate content. So this is the content of the certificate. As you can see, the email address is abc.com as we have provided on the YML.
so our database is now introduced it now we will connect to the primary of the replica as you can see the primary port uh, ip is 70 which is the first port so we will connect to this port we are executing to the port kx uh, is the short shortcut of kubectl exact id so we are connecting to the database shell uh, so uh, kubectl creates the user uh, with the certificate subject so this is the subject name so it uh, we can authenticate the database using the uh, client certificate and this user without any password okay let's connect to the database shell so we are now connected to the primary database shell now let's check the uh, configuration that we have provided So as you can see the max incoming connection is uh, 100k as we have provided now let's uh, insert some data we are uh, creating a database named qtb we are inserting some data in a test uh, collection So we have inserted two data, let's verify them. So two data inserted successfully. Now let's go to the next section. Now we will perform some operations on the database using MongoDB object web. First we will horizontally scale our database. If this is the mongodb obsequies to ml here we are providing the type as horizontal scaling the database reference as our database name and then in the horizontal scaling section we are providing the replicas as replicas as four so our database now has three replicas so it will be four after we are horizontally scale it using the mongodb obsequies let's apply the yml So we are showing the obsequist here, the original obsequist is created, it is now in progressing state. When it's completed successfully, it will convert it to the successful status. As you can see, the, our database is now showing critical status. Critical doesn't mean that you cannot use the database, you can still use the database. It only means that one of your node is not currently running as we have uh, added a node and that is not in running state our database is showing critical let's wait for the obstacles to become successful as you can see our obstacles is successful Let's verify from inside the primary shell uh, with our uh, replicated status. As you can see, there are one, two, three, and four nodes. Uh, here, three of them are secondary and uh, one is primary. Okay, let's check the data that we have inserted, inserted before. As you can see, the data still exists. Now we will use another obs request, uh, same horizontal obs request type uh, to uh, scale down our database. So we will now scale down our database to three replicas, same as before. We are providing the type as horizontal scaling database as, as our database name, and in the horizontal scaling section. Uh, we are providing the replicas as three. Now let's apply the final.
as you can see the yml is create uh, obstacles is created is now in progressing status let's wait for it to become successful As you can see, it is successful. Let's check again. As you can see, one, two, three. Now the number of nodes is three in the replica set. Two are secondary and one is primary. Let's check the data again. So the data still exists. Now we will vertically scale our database. So we are providing the MongoDB obstacles database vertically scaling in the database stage, same as before we are providing the database name. In the vertical scaling section, we are providing the replica set resources and the memory as 2 GB and CPU as 1.2 core. Before applying, let me show you the uh, current uh, resources of the ports. So as you can see, the first port has um, one core CPU, one GB memory. <coughs> now let's apply the ops request. So the ops request is created. The type is particle scaling. It is in progressing status. So now we do. Uh, our Kubernetes uh, enterprise operator will smartly restart all the ports. It will first uh, restart the secondary ports and finally it will restart the primary ports. As you can see, this is the secondary port is being restarted. Also, our database is now in critical state because one of the nodes is not ready. Let's wait for the obstacles to become successful. As you can see, the primary port restarted. Our QB enterprise elected a new primary. You can see the new endpoint here. It is the 74 IP, which is the second one. So as the primary is started, uh, new primary is selected, and also it is showing in our primary service. So the obstacles is now successful. Let's check the port resources again. As you can see, the port resource is now 1.2 core CPU and 2 GB memory, as we have provided in the ops request. Okay, let's also check the data. Oops, our primary has changed, so we have to use the second one as some primary 
so we are connected to our primary let's check the data so that our data is still exist now we will reconfigure our database so currently we have a 100k max incoming connection we want to change this to 200k uh, incoming connection so here we are providing the type mongodb obstacles type as reconfigure database references uh, our database name and in the configuration section we are setting the replica set inline config <coughs> Uh, as we are providing inline config, it will be merged with the current configuration secret. So our current configuration secret will also be changed to uh, this value. And also our database will have the new value. Let's apply. So the obstacle is reconfigured is created is now in progress in state. Let's wait for it to become successful. Same as before, it will smartly restart all the uh, node with the new configuration. First, it will restart the secondary ports. Then it will finally restart the primary port. We can see that our configuration config secret is changed or not the name of our configure config secret is config so we can view the secret as you can see it is changed to to the uh, 200k let's wait for it to become successful As you can see, our reconfiguration obstacle is now successful. Our current primary is 77, which is the first node. Let's exit, integrate, and verify that our configuration has changed. As you can see, our configuration has changed. Diamonds in current tension is now 200k. Also, let's verify the data. Also, the data exists. Now we will reconfigure our TLS. Our current uh, certificate has this email address only. We will now add another email address in the client certificate. So we are providing the type as reconfigure TLS and the database data is the database name. And then in the TLS section, we are providing the certificate. It's the, the client certificate. 
like this okay let's apply this of sequence to ml As you can see, the reconfigured TLS object is this created. It's now in progressing state. <clears throat> it will now change the certificate and apply it to all the node. I think the certificate is, has already changed. Let's check the certificate. As you can see, the new email address is added in the list. After all the node restarts, so we can verify that from inside the node. Let's wait for the obstacles to become successful. So the reconfigured TLS of Secret is successful. Let's verify it uh, from the node. The certificate exists in this path. So this is our client certificate. We can run an open SSL command to find out the email address. So as you can see, this certificate contains these two email address. So our uh, reconfigured deal is successful. Now let's go to the next MongoDB of suitcase. Here we will expand the volume of our database. So here we are providing the type of volume expansion and the database references our database name. And in the volume expansion section, we are providing the replica set uh, volume as 2 GB, which is currently 1 GB. Uh, let's apply the one and see what happens. So the volume expansion where obstacles is created is now in progressing instead. It will update all the PVC to 2 GB. Let's wait for it to become successful.
as you can see all the pvc size is upgraded to 2 gb also our boolean expansion is successful <clears throat> we can verify the size from inside the node if we run the df command on the data slash db our database path you can see that the current size is 2, 2 gb Okay, now let's update the database. Uh, here we will use the type as upgrade, and in the upgrade section, we will upgrade the database to 4.2.3. So we are providing the target version is 4.2.3. Let's apply the YML. So the upgrade top sequence is created is now in progressing step. It will update all the node smartly. Let's wait for it to become successful. As you can see, the update of request is successful. Also, the database version is changed to 4.2.3. Let's verify it from inside the database. Our current primary is IP83, which is the first port. So let's connect to the first port. Let's check the database version. As you can see, the database version is updated to 4.2.3. Now let's check the data that we have provided before. So the data still exists. So we have successfully updated our database to a new version. <coughs> now we will auto scale our database. So this is the YML of MongoDB auto scaler. Here we are providing the database reference as our database. We will storage auto scale the database. So here we are providing the replica set <coughs> in the replica section. 
uh, trigger is on that means in the database will be auto scale you can turn this off to turn off the auto scaling and we are providing the usage threshold as 70 percent scaling threshold as 50 percent that means if the usage of the database stores that means the pvc exceeds 70 percent then it will scale in the database to 50 percent of the current amount so our current amount is uh, 2 gb so it will uh, increase 50 percent so it will increase 1 gb so our database size will be 3 gb if the database uh, storage uh, uses uh, increases to 70 percent so let's uh, watch the mongodb auto scaler Uh, let's apply the auto scaler. So the auto scaler is created. So now we'll let's check in the bash and uh, run a command to, to create a file. So our store is full because if we want to insert data and make it uh, to 70 percent it will take some time so we are manually uh, storing uh, data in the so we are storing data in the uh, database path uh, big file so it will be exit 70 percent so we can see the storage auto scaling here let's start file let's check so our users of the database path uh, this path exceeded 70 percent is now 82 percent let's see if our auto scaler creates a object request so our database uh, size increases to new size like 3 gb As you can see, a volume expansion object is just created. It's now in progressing state. We can check the YML of it.
as you can see it's set to 3 gb Also, if you see here, the owner of this uh, ops request is MongoDB Autoscaler. So it is created by the MongoDB Autoscaler. So the ops request is successful. Also, you can see that the capacity is increased to 3 GB. Let's check it inside from the database. So as you can see the size is 3 GB. So the database is successfully auto scaled. Now we'll back up and restart the database using this test. Uh, first we need a repository. Uh, which uh, is uh, the backend of the uh, uh, backend where the backup will be taken. We are using Google Cloud Bucket. Uh, so we are providing the bucket name here and the bucket prefix here. Also uh, the secret that will be used to connect to the GCS here. The GCS secret contains the Google project ID, Google service account, JSON key and the listed password. Okay, now let's create the repository. Before creating, let's uh, close all this and view our new shared disk. First, let's watch the repository. So let's create the repository. So the repository is created. Let me show the bucket where the repository exists. This is the bucket, uh, uh, this is the repository. So here, nothing, no data exists here. So after taking the backup, we will see some data here. Okay, now, now we need a backup configuration, which um, um, specifies the schedule, like it will take a backup in every five minutes, and the task name, which actually uh, is a which actually is the name of the database uh, task that uh, takes the backup. In the repository section, we are providing the repository name. Uh, in the target reference section, we are providing the app binding name of our database. This is uh, automatically created by the KubeDB. Also, we are providing the retention policy here. Let's create the backup configuration. As you can see, the backup configuration is created. Uh, we can manually trigger the backup uh, backup using backup session, as this will take some time to create. So we can create the backup session and manually trigger the uh, backup. Uh, 
Okay, the backup section is created and it's in the running state. Let's wait for it to take the backup. So as you can see, it is succeeded. I'm pausing the backup configuration so that it doesn't take any a backup uh, when we are restoring the database. As it is succeeded, we let's check the a bucket. So there is some data now. It is the backup data. Now let's uh, connect to the database shell. And, uh, delete our database. Let's check the database first. So we have the QTB database. Let's drop the database. So the database is dropped successfully. Let's check. So there is no database named kubedb. Now we will restore the database using a restore session. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is the variable of the restore session. Here we are providing the task name as the task name which is responsible for taking the uh, which is responsible for the restore and we are providing the repository as our repository name and in the target section we are providing the uh, uh, app binding name and we are providing the rules as uh, snapshot rule as latest so it will take the restore of the uh, latest snapshot let's apply So that restore session is created. Uh, I forgot to mention that you can see here the in the repository the last backup successful backup time, the snapshot count, and the size of the database. So the restore session is succeeded. Let's check if the data is back or not. Let's show the DBs. As you can see, there is a DB called KubeDB now. Let's check the data. So the data is successfully restored. Thank you for watching this video. If we have any questions or comments please uh, you can uh, write in the comment section thank you